Hello everyone, I'm Matt Evans and welcome to Board Game Replay. In this series, you're going to be joining us for a post-game discussion where we sit down and talk about various elements of the game and then cut back to instant replays of moments that we found fun or exciting. Today's game is going to be Cosmic Encounter, which on the box is described as a game of infinite possibilities. And that's going to make a little more sense in just a second, but that is very, very true. I'll just tell you that right now. So before we get into the game, for those of you who are already familiar with this, um, I usually like to give you guys a, a link, which is going to be right here, that you can click on and skip right to the main part of the video if you already know everything about this game. So Cosmic Encounter is a sci-fi themed negotiation, bluffing, uh, space exploration style game, which that's really hard to describe this game. It's a very unique style of game, and it's probably just easier if I get down and give you an overview of the game. In this game, each player is going to be dealt a unique alien race that is going to give them one or more special powers that they can use throughout the game. Each player is also going to start with 20 ships across their five home colonies. See, these red ships match my, uh, my red home system here in all my home colonies. And the object of the game is for me to control uh, five foreign colonies. So all these other colonies right here are foreign colonies to me. And I need to control five of them total across the board. So I can control two in the yellow system here, one in the green, or even I could just have all five across the yellow system. And that would get me the, the, the win. So the first player to five foreign colonies wins the game. Now in order to show how you gain control of a foreign colony, I'm going to walk through a sample turn for you. So if it's my turn, the first thing I do is I'm going to draw a card from the Destiny deck. And this card has the color of one of the other players in the game. So in this case, white. What this means is now I'm going to have an encounter with the white player. So I'm going to take the hyperspace gate and I'm going to place this pointing at any of the um, white colonies here in that home system. So any system here that has white ships on it, all of them are exactly the same. So I'll just point it at this first one here. I'm then going to take a number of my ships, anywhere from one to four of my ships from my home colony here. And I'm going to place, let's say I place two there. I can do anywhere up to four, though. Now I have the ability to invite allies, and the defensive player has an ability to invite allies. And the reason you do that is basically to make yourself a little bit stronger on either offense or defense to try to win the battle. But in doing that, everybody that you invite is getting a benefit from doing so, so you want to choose those allies carefully. Now once all allies have been chosen, just the main players, which is the offense and the defense, not any of the allies, those main players are each going to select a card from their hand, an encounter card, and they're going to place that face down. So, each player starts the game with, uh, with a number of encounter cards in their hand, and throughout the game they're going to, get, they're going to be discarding them and drawing them for, for various effects. But let's say uh, player number one here, me, is this player plays this card, and this other player plays this encounter card. And we go to reveal them, and okay, yes, I played a 12... And the white player played a 6, so we add these to the number of ships that are there. So we've got a 12 and a 2 for me is 14, and a 6 and a 4 for the white player, which is 10. So that means I would win this encounter. And when that happens, this white player is going to lose all four of these ships because he lost the battle, and it's going to end up here in the warp. And then my two ships are going to fly onto this colony, and now I've taken over one foreign colony on the board. I move up one point on the victory track. And that's a, that's a very, very basic turn in this game. That's that's a very basic encounter that's not using any alien powers or anything like that. Actually, before we move on, I just want to cover allies really quick. Now, I mentioned earlier that you're allowed to invite other players at the table to come and assist you in an encounter. The reason they're going to want to do that is there are benefits gained depending on which side they're on. As an offensive ally, if you win the encounter, you get to join the other offensive main player on the colony that they won. So, if, uh, if Yellow joined me as an ally, they'd be sitting on this colony with me as well, and they'd get a point. If the defense wins and you're an ally, you get a number of defender rewards based on the number of ships that you contributed. So if you were to have contributed three ships to the defensive player, you get to draw either three cards from the cosmic deck or take up to three of your ships back from the warp or any combination of the two. So I know I explained encounter cards just a minute ago, but I want to show you the other two types of encounter cards that are in this deck, the other ways that you can interact in an encounter. Um, first of all, there's the negotiate card, which it's really fun. In this game, if both players play a negotiate card, then the players have one minute to make a deal. And that deal can basically be um, exchanging cards from their hands, any number of cards, or exchanging one colony for another, um, or even just having someone say, hey, I'll give you my colony if you give me these cards, whatever. You make up a deal and it has to be done in one minute. If there's no deal that's reached, if the players can't agree on something, each of them lose three of their ships to the warp. Now, if you play a negotiate card and your opponent plays an attack card, 
regardless of the number that they played and regardless of the number of ships that you have in play, you automatically lose. So an attack versus a negotiate always wins no matter what. And when that happens, just like you saw before, if the player wins, the, all the losing ships, defenders and allies, they go right to the warp. And uh, the winning player would take over that colony, or if they were defending, they would just defend their colony for that turn. Uh, but the cool part about when this happens, there's actually some times during the game where you want to negotiate when someone attacks you. Because for however many ships you lose to the warp, let's say you had four ships on defense, and you played a negotiate, and the other player played an attack card. Those four ships that you lost, for each ship you lost, you get to steal that many number of cards from your opponent. It's called compensation in this game. So sometimes you'll actually want to do that. You'll just let three or four of your ships go just so you can steal cards from your opponent's hand. It's actually really cool. The other type of card is the Morph card. It's the only other type of encounter card in the game. And this card just directly copies whatever your opponent's played. And there's really only one of these in the deck. So this doesn't come out very often, but it's a lot of fun when it does. <clears throat> All right, so now that I've covered a basic round and how encounter cards work, I want to talk about the alien powers in this game. So this is really the meat of the game. This is why this is a game of infinite possibilities and why it's so awesome, because on that first turn, I actually shouldn't have been able to do what I did, but I'll explain to you why. I'm playing the Macron race, and the Macron's power is mandatory, which means every time the condition comes up, which you can see in these little highlighted sections of the various phases of the game, Every time those conditions are met, I have to do what my card says. So in this case, any time I'm, I'm an encounter on offense, I'm only allowed to bring one ship. But that ship is worth four points. So it's kind of a really cool offensive ability because I don't have to put a huge risk forward when I go into battle. And it's basically the same thing as me placing four ships. So pretty basic power, but a lot of fun. I get to have these huge, powerful ships. So just as some more examples here, we've got the, the vacuum race. And whenever the vacuum loses ships to the warp, they take an equal number of ships from the other players and suck them into the warp with them as well. So you're just killing other people's ships whenever you lose them. Uh, and then we have the Calculator. And now this is an optional ability, unlike the last two that were mandatory. Uh, the Calculator, whenever the encounter cards are placed face down and both players have selected their cards, this player can optionally choose to equalize. And what that means is when the cards are flipped over, the larger number that's played is subtracted from the lower number that's played. So whatever, say if you played a 15 and an 8, the 15 is reduced by 8 in that, and the 8 stays the same. I know that that's a little confusing. But basically, it's, it's a way to play mind games with your opponent, because they, when they're selecting those cards for the encounter, they don't really know what you're going to play, or whether or not you're going to trigger that ability for that fight. So there's some mind games going on with both sides, and it's just I think that's a great example of the nature of this game, is you're always thinking and wondering, and... You never know what's going to come up in a battle. It's just a game of craziness. So those are just some of the basic powers in the game. Uh, there are just so many more and so many crazy interactions, and you just really never know what's going to happen in a particular game with each player having something new and crazy like that. And the, the base game comes with 50 alien races, and through expansions, I mean, you can end up with, with over 100, and they're just crazy and totally unique and totally awesome. Uh, <laughs> But uh, they just introduce all kinds of craziness and rules to the game that just a ton of fun. You never play the same game twice. So I just want to cover a few last things about other cards in this game. I've already talked about encounter cards, but uh, there are a couple other ones that I didn't cover, and I just want to make sure that you understand what they are. Um, there's something called artifact cards, which are basically uh, action cards that you can trigger during a certain time. Um, there's the big one. There's a couple of these in the deck that everyone loves is the Cosmic Zap. And this basically allows you to, as soon as a player's special ability is about to trigger for their alien race, you can play this Cosmic Zap and just destroy it for that encounter. So it just completely goes away. Whatever special thing they had, no more. Very fun. Um, there's a couple different kinds of things like that, but those are, those are basically what artifacts do. Uh, in addition to that, there are these pink cards, these reinforcement cards. And these are fun because you get to throw these down on an encounter after the cards have been revealed. So in this case here where I had played a, what did I play, a 12 um, to a 6, I could have thrown down a plus five reinforcement card um, to, to boost my side, or they could have played it to boost their side. You can actually even boost each other's sides if there's different um, game effects that you want to have them win or lose for. So that's a reinforcement card. And the last type of card is the flare card. And these are a little tricky, but they're really, really cool. And basically, each flare card that's in the game is shuffled into the deck based upon um, which alien races are playing in this game. So if I'm, I'm playing the Macron and all these other five races, they're going to all be mixed into this deck, uh, as well as five additional races that aren't in the game. 
And what these cards do is they have two effects. They have a wild effect up here and then a super effect down here. The wild effect, it basically just says, if you are not the race that's listed, I've got the Observer Flare card, and the Observer is not in this game, and I am not the Observer. So it says, as a main player, after alliances are formed, you may allow each player who allied with you to draw one card from the deck. Hmm, cool. Just a card to let everyone know that it's a good idea to join you in a fight. They might want to come along. They might be more willing to come along with a card like this. What's cool about these is you can play one of them per encounter, and then it just comes right back to your hand. It never goes away. Very, very cool. Down here below, there's an even stronger, even more crazy power that triggers uh, if you actually are the race that has this card. So even though your alien power is really great and awesome and unique, you really want the flare card that's buried in that deck somewhere throughout the game. So there's a lot of different ways to try to go after him and try to get it. You might want to negotiate for it. You might want to try to gather that compensation and pull it from the player that you might think has it. Very good stuff. Uh, a lot of fun. It's actually not recommended to start this game with it. Uh, it might be a little overwhelming, but once you have a grasp on the game, definitely, definitely recommend the flare cards. They're a lot of fun. So I think I've covered most of what you need to know to get a good grasp on this game. But if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments below or shoot me an email. I have all that in the description of this video. But I think uh, with that said, I think it's time to get down to the, to the game. See you in just a bit. Cosmic Encounter. I actually, I actually won a game. It was very Again, cosmic. I'm very excited. That was, uh, that was a really close game. We actually all got to four points before the very end of the game. <laughs> it was like totally lopsided for most of the game. And then the last, what, last round, it just, everybody got to four points. When you get somebody that gets up that high early cam, <laughs> you, you, you gang up on them real quick. I, so, oh, yeah. I, had, I had the win in the bag until Jeremy pulled out the... Um, the Cosmic Quake. So it goes back to the regroup phase? Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna Cosmic Quake. What does that do? Oh. oh. Isaac has 30 cards to get rid of. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh you just screwed me so hard. <laughs> yeah, you just oh. screwed me. Oh. Jeremy, I had my card, I had Oracle, and I had your. I had, I had three flares. <laughs> oh. Good. Yeah, that was probably Jer pretty good. Yeah, Jeremy. Jeremy, was, <laughs> Jeremy actually just saved the game because I was gonna win. I bet. I bet. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. I had cards, a three X and a twenty. Oh. So no matter what. Oh. <laughs> oh man, that is good. So I had I had a three X damage with a twenty card, and I had my next attack. Oh. I was on my next round of attack, and right at the Re the regroup phase. phase, he called that cosmic quake. I had to hand all my cards in and then reshuffle new cards, and I got like negotiate cards. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would have had it, and then they started. To sh Pushing me back and what was that? <laughs> just started pushing me back. Uh, yeah, so, man, you got pounded pretty good for getting the lead. I did. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's tough to get in the lead, and uh, you never know what someone's gonna play. Right at the end was really cool when it came down to we knew it was either gonna be Isaac or Matt because yeah. of Isaac's special ability. Yeah, and and your attack. We so, didn't even realize it. You want an ally in we this? Where's it going? Yeah, yellow. Which one's your attack? Are you redirecting? I'm. Ooh, you can redirect it to you. Yeah. Bring it. To oh, wow. <laughs> oh man. Well, that's so okay, good. so I'm gonna direct it here. God, I have such a good so opportunity. Attacker is. Oh wait. Oh, Matt's attacking. Either way, one of the two guys win this round. Yeah. Game over. Anyone have a cosmic zap? Oh wow! Look at that. So this is just this just brought the game down between me and Isaac. I didn't yeah. realize We're that. out of it because if you win. Oh, I'll do a dual who win. Wants to choose, yeah. Who wants to choose sides? Who wants to choose sides <laughs> at this point? I'll yeah. do a dual win with you. Well, you know, because if they go with you, they don't get <laughs> from it. Right. They come with me, so, they actually win. So if you I want... invite everybody. Yeah. Just... Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Everyone but Isaac no. wins. Yeah. That is the lamest way to end this uh, freaking game. Oh, hilarious. man. I'd rather win on my own if I could. I'd rather can? win solo. But I don't want to give it to Isaac. Well, Bam. I'm Matt's going for it. Right. I'm inviting no one. I'm inviting everyone. And I think they're all going to tell you to go to hell. <laughs> so one person's going to win. That's the idea. Wow. Unless you negotiate, yeah. 
Oh yeah, I negotiate. I'm playing. I just played a negotiate. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. I'm sure. Here it is. Let me see the moment of truth. Let's see what you got first. Do you have a forty? Do you really? No. Do you? You won. <laughs> oh man. Thirty-three. Oh, you had the forty all. Thirty-three. Along. Just for fun. Just for insult to injury. Yeah. Fine. I had the forty. Jeez. That me drawing eight cards right there was huge because it let me get a whole nother. I mean, I was. So I would have won if Jeremy didn't freaking party hard. <laughs> Had we had a cosmic zap, we could have prevented that. Yeah, that would have been good. He's mine early. Man, it's. I mean, there's to talk about the actual game and strategy. I think I think you need to play a lot of this game to really develop a good strategy and know the races really well, or know the distribution of the cards. That's why we're all playing with these. <laughs> I've heard about these from Board Game Geek. These little, uh, they have the frequencies of all the card distributions in, in the game, and so we were using these a surprising amount. Card Just counting. Like, to yeah. try to control We're, what we knew was happening and, you know, for what cards had come up, but... So it helped a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'd really like did. to really touch on yeah. Jeremy's upset um, and how he was able to play a reinforcement card on top of my <laughs> cards to give me more damage so I would win, <laughs> lose, lose. Well, let's, lose. let's explain Jeremy's power. Okay. You want to talk yeah. about your power? Yeah. yeah. Um, show them, too. I'm the, the loser. <laughs> uh, you have the power of upset. As a main player, before the encounter cards are selected, you may use this power to declare an upset. Once an upset has been declared, both main players must play an attack card if possible. Then, after cards are revealed, the winning side loses and the losing side wins. Yes, I'm declaring a upset. upset. Okay. So you have to play an attack card. You mm -hmm. can't play and negotiate if you have an attack card. Okay. A counter card. So, oh my god, you had a negative 10? Negative 1. It's upside down. Uh, <laughs> I do that every time we win. <laughs> so Jeremy wins that one. Jeremy wins that because he lose lost win. it. You lose win. Yes. You that too. So you and declared I, an upset. Man, that is such a tricky power to fight. So I'm going to declare upset. You are declaring an upset. Man, that's so strong. Only if you have crappy cards. Negative, negative ones. Mm -hmm. Negative sevens. What Play it. More. Oh, he copies yours. Defense wins. And defense wins. I win. I'm reinforcing you. Oh! oh! What? You can't reinforce me. Yeah, you, you can. can. He's gonna reinforce any right. side. Oh. Oh, <laughs> uh, so that makes you win, which makes you. Lose. <laughs> I would not have thought of that. That sucks. Jeremy, you're such a loser. Wait, man. wait, hold on. I can reinforce you too. Correct. Do you have more than five. No. <laughs> <laughs> you got really excited. That's the, high, the highest in there. So Cam, you won, lost. All right. So that bumps <laughs> Cam back. He goes down a point. That's hilarious. <laughs> Your power was actually one of the more fun ones that we saw because it's just so funny to purposely yeah. try to lose battles. And it actually awesome. it clashed really well with with Isaac's ability of devouring or not like devouring forcing, but like forcing, forcing people attacks. to attack his huge stacks. Where Jeremy could be like, "Well, if you if I'm attacking your huge stack, yeah. I call an upset." Attack yeah. my one. Uh, yeah. He had like eight stacks, and I used one ship. Mm -hmm. and Isaac had the uh, the siren, which again I'll. Right here, I'm just putting it on the screen right here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the the siren has uh, the ability to redirect any. So if Isaac has a colony established over here, and I go to attack James on my turn, I drew the white card. This Isaac, since Isaac has a colony here, he can basically redirect that back at himself. And so he was just making these huge defensive stacks to mm -hmm. to use that, and that actually helped you. The a few yeah, times. The it, cool it helped me a couple times until yeah. until yeah. Jeremy was the loser. Yeah, right. Such a loser. Yeah. The cool part um, <laughs> about that is it actually kind of keeps us safe, keeping our cards in play, because I wasn't really losing any colonies. Because if I were being attacked, it was like Isaac's like, nope, you're going to attack me instead, giving him the opportunity to score a point. Yeah. But it kept my card in play. Yeah. And I think that you can look, all of us still have a lot of colonies it's because true. of Isaac's it's special great. ability. Yeah. And yeah. To, to note, on Isaac's, in the end of Isaac's special ability, another side note is that anytime he wins on defense, he gets to take one of that person's, the person who, ki who, who is attacking him, he gets to take one of their colonies. So he's the only player in this game that can win on a, defense. he can, he can win a colony on defense. So he's the only Which one that can get a point on defense. And, and offense. So he's got a huge advantage yeah. to be able to attack and defend. And yeah. Just, yeah. And, and just important. having that ability contrasts so much with the last game. I mean, the last game we were all losing our abilities because we're losing all these planets. Yep. But mm -hmm. because he had that ability, it's like everybody's power stayed in play. Exactly. Right. I don't think anyone actually lost point. their power. No, no right? one lost their yeah. power. Nah. And in the beginning, I was trying to get you to lose your power because Matt's power. Let's talk about that. <laughs> Matt's power is pretty ridiculous. So uh, the grudge is what I have, and um, 
He is, he's fun. He basically says, he, his whole thing is he penalizes players for refusing to ally. So if I invite Jeremy, for example, and he says, no, I don't want to go. I say, well, here you go. Take one of these grudge tokens. And at the end of an encounter, he discards that token. And depending on the outcome of the battle is what happens, what, what happens to so him. So you win the battle. If I win the battle and Jeremy didn't come along with me, he loses a ship. If I lose, he loses four. So no matter what happens, if somebody refuses to come with me, they're losing something. Versus yeah. my ability of the animal... <laughs> party animal is if you don't invite me at all you lose a ship but I had my card so if you don't invite me you lose two ships so I was hoping that everyone was going to invite me early in the game yeah so I could actually get up the and I, that happened yeah you oh, see yeah. early game that people didn't want to lose their ships and Matt kept calling them out I did yeah, yeah. I was like knock it off so because I was already one at, ship I was already at four points you know, when everyone else was kind of down low because they had to invite me. They were bringing you in. Well, they were. that's why I was yelling at them. Mm -hmm. and because they were bringing you in to help them on offense, which is gaining you another colony mm -hmm. because they didn't want to lose one ship. One ship like, it's yeah. one ship. You have yeah. 20 of them. Sometimes my strategy is to try to get other people to come in with me and then play like a negotiate and so just, they lose just their lose ships. It. That's you know? what I did the first yeah. time, actually. It's yeah, like, it oh, yeah, let's try to get some ships off the board here. Yeah, watch you guys ally with me. You'll get some <laughs> cards. And then just kidding. All right, you bring any friends? I will invite Matthew. Okay. For Cameron, who are you invite? I'm going to invite everybody. <laughs> For defense? For defense. All right. so you want to negotiate? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So you're <laughs> you're going to negotiate? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You guys are actually going to negotiate? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I get I get uh three cards for three you. Cards. Yeah, that's okay with me. I'll take the okay ships. With me. I love that. You're like, yeah, we're actually gonna you actually played one. <laughs> it, hey, I was gonna lose anyway. <laughs> I had a, I had the fun card. I didn't Jeremy, your loser uh your flare card for the loser yep. is hilarious. You can play it if you're not the if you're not the loser, you can play it and just after encounter cards have been played, everybody loses. Now I think it's I don't have it now, but I believe it's it's just, I think it's before encounter cards are played. You can just say, you know what? Both sides lose. Everybody loses the losing condition of the battle. Like, wow. Like, you just wanted to get, like, a huge, like, space battle going and throw that in and just everybody loses. That would have stopped ships. that last turn there. That would have completely way. negated the last turn, yeah. That would have been awesome. Only if I didn't invite you. That's why I wanted to make sure in case one of you guys had well, that. That you, last turn, you know, I didn't invite anybody. More. Let's talk about James's power. God, it's so Being hard to, to fight you. Yeah. The opponent's card means... As the Oracle, it actually made things... A little bit less interesting, I found, um, because I could mm -hmm. see people's cards ahead of time. There was no bluffing. There was no chance to Cannot sort of... bluff the Oracle. Yeah, it's just, okay, well, I just saw what you played, and now I get to respond. Uh, yeah. It was also a little limiting in terms of, you know, I know what I have in my hand, and I know what you played, and now if I don't have something good in my hand to overcome it, it's just, it's done. There's just, you know, there was no opportunity to try to psychologically, right. you know, create that situation to bluff my way through it, too, so... It actually limits both sides of the uh, the equation there. And who has your card? I think Isaac has your Oracle card. And as let's yes. see, the Super Freer says, as the main player, you may end an encounter after your opponent reveals his or her card. So you can just shut that the was, encounter right and off. And that was something I was really hoping would come up, uh, oh, just that's because. Oh, so good. If I saw your hand and I knew I didn't have anything in my, or I saw your card and I didn't know I had anything in my hand, and I had that card. It's like I'm out. Yeah. You know? You're like, nope, I'm not doing yeah. it. Versus, oh, you know, knowing that I don't and I have to mm -hmm. play yep. something. And yeah, it, it made it a little. If you less get to the exciting. point where you have no attack cards, do you? No, it's when you have no encounter cards. That's what I mean. No one. encounter cards. Negotiate. Encounter cards and can you have to negotiate. Play one. Negotiate. Oh, you got to play, you gotta play wow. negotiate. And negotiates an encounter card. I, I got to the point where I had like two negotiate cards. And yeah. I was like, so hey. with that, you have to plan accordingly. I and you can't really, you can't really gain a point from negotiate. No, I mean, unless you, I, unless you make a deal with someone. Well, when you're on when you're on your fourth point, no one's very few people are going to give. Unless you want to do a double win, I'll give you a colony. You give me a colony, double win. That's and I think that's a good opportunity when you don't have another choice. Right. When you're yeah. like, it's my second encounter. There's no way it's going to come back to me right. again. Let's just share a win so we can mm -hmm. get it and we can win it. Mm -hmm. But sure, victories are lame. Mm -hmm. That was crazy. We ended up with just a full way tie on the last <laughs> point. Yeah, it just that happened just... that way. That's cool. Yeah, it's cool. I, I think it's fun. And the last time we played, it was a totally different game. I mean, the concept of the game is very simple, and it does have like a beat on the leader type of thing. But I think, I don't know, I think the game's light enough with enough politics that it kind of helps. The races make it so you could play this game a thousand oh, yeah. times, and oh, it's yeah. such a different yeah. game. The though. dynamic I mean, just changes it, with every the game. The entire game changes when oh, you yeah, pick totally. a different race. So, I mean, I, I think to that, too, I mean, sometimes you might play and have a less eventful game mm -hmm. with powers. They just might mm -hmm. not mesh really well. 
Like, like for example, like James had said, if he had gotten a hold of his flare card, it would have been a really powerful ability for him, and he probably would have gotten a lot more of it. Mm-hmm. But in this game, it just was kind of uneventful because the other powers kind of took the spotlight. But yeah, but it doesn't mean that you came in. You still had four. You still got up there with your with your abilities. You know, like you were able to stop defenders from necessarily. It, it's hard to say too because you were able to slow down defenders or slow down attackers from taking your stuff because you got to see and your tell cards. when yeah. the negotiates were ha- happening and which know is important. and actually yeah that's it's huge. That's, yeah, I mean, look, he has one one plan that got taken over. Yeah, because yeah. if you yeah. have like a good good hand, a good cards. You don't want someone to negotiate and have you attack. Like you had the advantage of not getting any of your stuff stolen. Yeah, and I noticed that this this time around, it was uh, it was a lot easier to defend. It just yeah, yeah you can yeah, see it's it just it's so much easier when you kind of have it all laid out in front yeah. of you. <laughs> There's some really cool combos that you can come up with in that deck, and yeah, I was I was pretty close because I had another morph. So oh yeah, wow. the morph so, card is awesome. Yeah. Well, let me mention this too. So we have all the races from the four expansions for this game mixed in. But we're also using the um, the rewards deck from the first expansion, the Cosmic Incursion, I think it's called. And this adds the, the different backs, so everyone knows you have this when they go to potentially take them from you for a defender reward or for a... Uh, yeah, what you call Except it? for those ones that if you steal it, you get really... Compensation. So people knows you, know you have these different cards for compensation, but they add just a variety of stuff. They add these kicker cards that can multiply things and... Yeah. Crooked negotiations. There's one where you, if you do steal it from a from a bad negotiation, you no, actually end up yeah. losing, right? Yeah, it says yeah. Basically, if another player steals this card from your hand, they lose X amount of ships. So you lose three ships or you lose four ships. So it adds an interesting element to the game anyway. Take- but yeah, we played with that. I, I think other than that, for the most part, we didn't really play with any other expansion elements aside from some of the expansion races. But that's what that reward deck is. If you're wondering when you go to play this game, it's a really sweet game. Yeah. How yeah. long? How long do you think that that went for? That would, I mean, without all of our extra mini breaks and stuff, well, it's probably sometimes two hours. It's a two-hour game, right? Getting the 100% on the rules yeah, gets right. a little confusing. That's that's a good point. You could put the, this game into an hour. If you knew yeah, if you were, nah, I think it's, it's, a, it's that little bit of thinking when... I, I think the longer... I think the more you play this game, even though it's it's fairly light in terms of like how much you can control the game, I think like I think there's a certain amount of gang up on the leader. So even if you're being really smart and playing really, really well, oh, and you get way in the too. lead... People either aren't going to help you, or they're going to attack you, or they're going to find ways Play to do it. Play lots of reinforced cards. I think there's definitely some strategy to it where you can plan things out, but the negotiations and the political aspect of it is, is really... Yeah, the it seemed like as soon as you got up to about three, it was like, nobody wants to help you anymore. Yeah, no, and no, you're not no, even right. really into the position to win it. You're just getting there, and nobody wants to see you get there. Exactly. What yeah. about, um, would you say that five people is the optimal... Uh, that's why I wanted five for this. Actually, is that I, from a lot of what I read, people say five is is like the the, the point you want to be. There's enough powers interacting that there's cool stuff happening. Yeah, you can go up to eight with the, the expansions. Wow. That would just be crazy. Yeah. Yeah. As, as it was that, now, it was what thirty minutes between turns almost. Like yeah. we had what two and yeah. a half rounds of the game, and it was it. That was How many true. turns do you think we actually made? Everyone three. typically we made went around two. twice. Three. Yeah. Maybe maybe three rounds. Three right. four rounds is all we did. Imagine that, that with eight. Three. Yeah, that would be crazy. You wouldn't even get your third turn, and the game would potentially be over. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like so much pig piling on the leader. I, s- I, I saw with uh, when there's four players, it kind of turns into two on two a little bit it sometimes. Can, yeah. And, you do the and shit I don't. Yeah, stuff. I agree. Like uh, a, f- a five and up really kind of mixes it up a lot. I mean, the turns turns get a little longer, but it's worth it because you have that mix up of. Calling allies and stuff like that—it yeah. makes it a little more interesting. Um, one thing I wanted to add, yeah. yeah, with and the other thing with the five players, I, we never played it with Wes, but I can only imagine if, you, like, say you had three, like there'd be. Like, yeah, minimum is three, but it's a totally different. Yeah, there'd be. There, oh, is it different rules? No, it's the same game. No. But I just mean. Yeah, because you still have different. to take five planets, so you like have to wipe somebody completely out. So they, yeah, they recommend when you're playing with either I think it's either fewer players or for new players, so just playing with four planets each oh. or four, but. But you you still need to capture five. I think so. I think either you play a four or something like that. Yeah, it's it's a slightly different game, but yeah, a very different game in the same way. Like yeah, yeah, with enough people, there's enough targets, and you don't like we like nobody got wiped out like completely. I got pretty close, but to losing my power. But. I I think this game has a real advantage to like replay value because of these cards. It's so even different, yeah. even like even a game even a game like Game of Thrones where you can play the uh, play the different houses and stuff like that like there's only there's only a maximum of what five houses right, so yeah, yeah. like or six or six, or in six, game, or six in the main and then game. four in the one we played yeah. but but I mean, finding this strategy with your own card from the <laughs> yeah. deck, like your deck yeah, is like huge. that tall. So 
I mean, it's just a big dick. Being yeah. able to re- <laughs> being able to uh, replay this game over and over again, finding the new strategies with different characters is a yeah. lot of fun. Yeah, I, I like a lot of games like that where it's just there's it's the same game, but there's enough like small world or things like that where replay it's different value. every time. Yeah, yeah, totally replay different. value. You guys want to do another one? Yeah, do yeah. another one. <laughs> Beer run. Fill it Beer up again. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, thanks for watching. That's going to do it for us today. Thank you guys very much for coming. Thanks for James, Sam, thanks Jeremy, for Isaac. Sweet. Yeah. We'll Fun. do this again soon. Hopefully. Absolutely. What's next week? Kemet. So, yes. Uh, before, as you guys may have been watching, if you followed our last few videos, we had a contest to see what games are going to be played next. And Game of Thrones and Cosmic Encounter were tied. And the other one that still had a fair amount of votes was Kemet. So, we're doing that next. We're going to try to get that in here in a couple of days and should have it out to you in the next week or so. So uh, stay tuned for that. Look for that soon. Leave your comments below. <laughs> Thanks, Cam. <laughs> All right, everybody. Take it easy. See you next time.